Welcome to Hybrid Warfare Analytical Group's UCMC podcast, where our analysts convene to delve into the realms of Russian disinformation, propaganda, and the influence of hybrid warfare in 2024. In this episode, we will discuss Pavel Dorov and his recent arrest in France, what this means, how this affects the war, and how his arrest, if it does or not, benefit the Putin regime. We are joined by Nastya and Vladimir, analysts from the UCMC um, Hybrid Warfare Analytical Group. And um, thank you guys for coming on today. It will be interesting to address this situation as it's still rather topical. And there's lots and lots of chat going on in Russian propaganda channels at the moment. And we all have been watching this quite closely um, to see what actually is going to potentially be the outcome of this and how does it affect future steps of this war. So, Nasya, um just give us a little bit of a background of uh, what have they been speaking about and um, what have you been looking at on uh, all the social media and Russian propaganda chatter regarding Dorov? I'm not really uh, concentrating my um, attention in uh, on Russian propaganda. Uh, I um, decided to take um, a sh- uh, um, short overview of what Telegram is. Uh, it uh, and um, t- Telegram user space is uh, spread around the world uh, with uh, significant adoption in regions like the Middle East, uh, South Asia, and Eastern Europe. And um, its platform that grown into one of the most impactful messaging platforms globally with over uh, to 800 million monthly active users as of 2024. And uh, different sources claims its end-to-end encryptions and emphasis on privacy have made it particularly popular in regions when their digital security is a concern, and uh, the main concern is Russia itself. It uh, it what it is, and in March 2024, Alexander Menichenko, a, a representative of the Ukrainian Special Services, uh, stated that Telegram co- 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 cooperates and uh, um, work with uh, Russian Special Services and Roskomnadzor. In particular, it for- fulfills the request of the Russians to block some channels. Um, and according to the evidence of various resources, there is um, a play in Kremlin's favors. Um, wired investigations, uh, for example, revealed that Telegram's native tools allows users to be tracked. At the same time, Russian special service can have access even to closed chats, also, the mass media reported on the Russian component of Telegram, and it is critical, uh, having in mind uh, spreading an impact uh, of Telegram. Uh, Dura's arrest led to even increasing of popularity of this app, increasing numbers of downloads. T- uh, Telegram is currently seeing an increase, and uh, its increase is such big that it's sending it uh, to the number two position in the uh, USA App Store social networking key charts and boosting its global iOS downloads by uh, 4%. And uh, Telegram overtook WhatsApp and uh, Facebook Messenger to become the most popular instant messaging app in Azerbaijan, Belarus, Armenia, Ethiopia, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Cambodia, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine. And in Il- in all of these countries, there is a component of Russian interest and influence. So I think this is not a coincidence. So, Nastia, this will be a really question for both of you. So we can open up this discussion here. But uh, you're telling, obviously, uh, it seems like this is beneficial uh, to Telegram and those that um, are basically uh, wanting Telegram to stay around with these uh, with it becoming more popular. So that puts into question, who has this arrest? To whom has this arrest been more beneficial? Uh, has it been more beneficial to um, Dorov and his um, building of his telegram to make it more popular? Um, is it more beneficial to Putin? We've got obviously lots of data to go on that. Um, the Kremlin has long wanted to have more control over all social media in, uh, in Russia. Does this potentially provide them with an opportunity to create their own if it's the end of Telegram or even if it's not the end? Will we see more collaboration between Putin and, and Dorov? 
So what do you think, guys? Uh, who is this beneficial for? I think uh, that, uh, of course, this arrest uh, creates uh, some kind of aura of rebel around uh, Pavlo Durov. But uh, anyway, we should keep in mind that uh, his first uh, creation, I mean, of contact social network, uh, couldn't uh, be uh, such successful without any connections with uh, Russian special services. And uh, the story of uh, Telegram also in some, in some dimensions reflects uh, his uh, first success of, of contact there social network and uh, i may predict uh, that uh, of course uh, this uh, arrest raise uh, their interest uh, towards telegram among especially among western audiences where uh, nowadays and previously telegram was viewed mainly as some kind of dark net platform but uh, now we uh, have witnessed kind of hype around this uh, news and after this wave will will uh, low down the interest uh, towards uh, telegram will not uh, overrate uh, the the number of users of uh, traditional uh, social networks but the long standing dynamics will depend on uh, the final it, uh, final negotiations i think that the real uh, ground for this arrest is to negotiate with paulo duro and the european authorities how telegram will uh, com communicate and interact with European and uh, United States to uh, cut down these illegal activities. But, but what I mean, in terms of um, Durov coming to France, obviously he knew that um, it was a huge possibility that he was going to be arrested in France, yet he still made that um, that decision to to go there. Uh, what? Why would he have done this when he knows that he was going to be arrested he maybe there's many people saying that he thinks he's above the law he even had a reg um a uh, table booked for him at a restaurant for the evening like it must be in some certain uh, aspects beneficial for him that this has happened um or is it more beneficial for the west that they've got you know him where he needs to be for to cooperate who who is it beneficial for yeah, there is two points of, of how to perceive this story. Whether it was a, a like a, a honey trap for Pablo Duro and his arrest was unexpected for himself, but uh, still I rely on another version that uh, this step was calculated by Duro before, and uh, we we just uh, looking for some particles of a long-standing. Uh, gamble between uh, Russian special services and uh, attempts of the Western special ser services to intercept circling of information, uh, hidden information in Telegram, because this uh, service uh, became very important uh, toolkit of spreading Russian disinformation, and uh, also it is used by Russian uh, special services to recruit uh, collaborants among Ukrainian citizens and uh, also many uh, Russian soldiers and military officials communicate with, uh, with each other through uh, the means of telegram. And uh, we have many witnesses how Russians even launch their rockets and uh, UAVs uh, through the information that they received through telegram. So that is an issue not just about... Uh, free of speech or some illegal activities and all this stuff like uh, drug trafficking, fraud and money laundering. This is uh, like a pretext to detain uh, Durov. But I think that the main purpose is uh, to cut down this uh, possibility for Russians to use Telegram as a toolkit to, to undermine the stability of uh, Western countries, especially European. Mm-hmm. Um, let's bring this back to um, the point before, though. So uh, Dorov has been in, correct me if I'm wrong, Azerbaijan um, recently, just before his uh, trip to um, to France. Putin also has been in Azerbaijan recently as well, and it was reported that they may have, there's no uh, definite report on this, they may have met. Um, doesn't it seem a little bit, 
it's coincidental that uh, all of a sudden Putin is speaking to him and then he decides to move to France. So then therefore I go back to my question again. Who is this beneficial for? Does this benefit Putin? Does this benefit Europe? Does this benefit the West? Nastya, what do you think? Thinking about uh, Durov at Putin's uh, trips is uh, seems uh, quite conspiracy to me, and I'm not really into it. Uh, but um, I think that uh, Russia may have benefits from this, from this situation, from Durov's arrest, or only in terms of uh, advertisement telegram, of uh, marketing of telegram, and uh, their picture uh, of Telegram as a platform of um, free speech <laughs> uh, it's, it's really beneficial from Russia. I, I agree with you there, Nastia. Um, so I think it plays more into the hand of the Kremlin, but also if uh, Telegram was taken away, I, I go back to my original point, it plays into the hand to the point of there will need to be another uh, created and um, if the Kremlin deemed it no longer to be safe because they thought Durov had somehow given the um, the uh, access to the French authorities, which puts the Russian military um, up for grabs, basically, because a lot of their operations is uh, conducted through Telegram, then I think it would be a very easy sell for Putin to then therefore say, we need to create our own, just like they did for YouTube, and then giving Putin, the Kremlin, more control over society, which is what they want and actually um, are inspiring for since post um, full scale invasion of Ukraine. I do not agree. Uh, I, I quite disagree with you. <laughs> hmm. uh, because you know, I say that uh, fighting Telegram for Kremlin is like a fighting a shadow uh, because uh, Telegram is really a platform for spreading disinformation under mask of uh, uh, freely, more freely um, platform than um, it was uh, contacted before. And uh, uh, if you remember, Telegram was created as a more freely uh, version of Contacte. So I still think that uh, there, uh, there will not uh, appear any of um, uh, Russian alternatives for Telegram soon. And but it's it's uh, just discussion. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, let's move on to the next question. So, um, what's wrong with the compa- comparison that we're seeing a lot now on social media between um, Durov having to take responsibility for everything that happens on Telegram? Obviously, him being uh, arrested for charges of cybercrime, drug trafficking, and facilitating illegal activities, being the facilitator of such, um, compared to let's say, Macron, um, who doesn't take responsibilities for everything that happens in the country. This has been one of the, the narratives by propaganda. What is the difference and how can we show people that there is a huge difference in this? It's not uh, apples and apples, it's apples and oranges. Volodymyr, what do you think? Anduro is not responsible for all the content that uh, appears in the social network, which he is guide. But uh, anyway, he uh, chose algorithms that uh, allow to spread not uh, just disinformation, but uh, information that uh, is really of a genocidal character against Ukrainians. There are many examples uh, of the footages and videos of beheaded Ukrainian soldiers and another examples of, of uh, massacres which uh, Russian soldiers conducted in Ukraine that spread uh, through Russian telegrams. From such a background, we should keep in mind that freedom of speech does not mean that uh, you are allowed to to spread all information you, you would like. So you have to be responsible for the consequences. And uh, that is all the story is about. And that is why Western uh, special services try to engage and to interact to this uh, borderless spread of uh, information through the means of telegram. Yeah, I think that answer for your question is really simple. 
uh, for me, because Macron does not have benefit, does not, not have uh, income and profit from all friends, but Durov do. Durov is a CEO of his company and uh, his income depends on the function of the app. And business is not equal to politics. It is such simple as it is. In particular, the CEO of Telegram uh, have a right to make decision. And I think that it's, it is really important. Uh, and if, he, if there were decisions to work with Russian special service, to not interfere or, and to not do something with using Telegram, the app you have responsibility for, for committing crimes, I think those things is so important that there is no chance Durov do not know about it. Um, even uh, um, from above, there are articles and uh, investigations, and I'm sure there are domestic audits. Uh, uh, and Durov, I'm sure, uh, knows about all of these things. And from my opinion, even doing nothing about it makes Durov complicit in those crimes, and it has nothing in common with uh, being a president of a European country. Absolutely, and um, it's not as if he wasn't warned. He was given many warnings throughout the uh, for many years, especially since the full scale invasion. So he's had the ability to change it, um, and has decided not to. And as she said, is that if he chose to make money of it? Yeah. Absolutely. It definitely, we will stay um, observing this event, these events very closely. Um, we will be producing some kind of analysis at UCMC as well, just to keep you guys up to date with what is happening exactly and how this could potentially affect the um, Russia-Ukrainian war um, and freedom of speech, as they like to say, in, in the rest of social media and the world. Um, guys, thank you very much for coming on today and for giving your um, analysis. And until next time, goodbye.